Welcome to Vader TV, the site on innovation and innovators. I'm Bambi Francisco, and I'm speaking with Tony Conrad. He founded Sphere in 2005. Sphere is a syndicator and distributor of content across the web. Tony, thanks for joining us. Hey, it's great to be here. Tony, for the many entrepreneurs around the world and not the early adopters who may not know what Sphere is, just give us an explanation of how Sphere syndicates and distributes content across the web. Yeah, so what we've done is um, we figured out through a technology that can essentially read an article and figure out what the article is talking about dynamically. And we can then look at other articles, um, such as blogs or other mainstream media articles, and read those articles on the fly as well and find things that are contextually relevant to the article that somebody is reading. So if you're reading something about iPhone, um, a couple weeks ago in the New York Times, one of our partners in their tech section, um, they had an article on um, iPhone futures, which just sounds like a ridiculous thing, doesn't it? But um, anyways, so I thought it was a pretty interesting article, and I clicked on the bottom of it to see is there other people that are talking about this topic, and sure enough, there was a lot of bloggers talking about it, and a lot of great bloggers. And so our little application that pops up on the page finds those uh, related stories and then points you as a reader to them. You can click and go right to TechCrunch or GigaOM or whatever blog it might be. What's the click-through rate? Um, we're doing about a third of a point across the board now. And now certain sites have much higher click-through rates um, and others have lower, of course. But one of the things that we've been able to really kind of drive um, exposure through is when we take the links instead of putting them in the widget putting them in line right next to the article in a module and that drives cl click-through rates up past um, one percent in some cases and when you work with the traditional uh, media companies such as the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal how do they respond to the fact that you are potentially driving some of the traffic away to the blogosphere since you're essentially allowing the users, the Wall Street Journal and mm -hmm. New York Times users, to discover what else is out there? That's a great question. Um, and I think it's probably three years ago this business wasn't possible because I don't think that there was a certain um, you know, recognition and embracing of linking out and I think what some of the you know, more walled garden approaches have learned is that some of the guys who were linking out grew much faster because they created a better user experience. And so you know, the thing I've been impressed by is people like the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or CNN, Washington Post, all these guys who are our partners or becoming our partners, is how they've embraced this notion of let's just create a great user experience for our users. And if we do that, yes, they may leave the page, but ultimately they'll come back the next morning. But when they leave the page, are they actually leaving that particular article? Are they actually leaving the CNN page? No, we or? open up another window. Okay, so that page view actually goes to them. That's right. right. But the article and the, the authors actually from somewhere else, but, but AOL or your other partners actually benefits from that page view. Exactly. Okay. So you have one billion content pages today, or, or more than that, uh -huh. correct? Over more than that and accelerating, yeah. So what does one billion content pages, what does that generate in terms of unique visitors and uh -huh. page views? Because ultimately that's the, the, um, the bottom line, right? Yeah, so you know, I'm going to use a deflated number here because um, I'm not going to include certain partners in that number, but we're doing about 6 million uniques across the network and about 30, a little bit over 30 million page views. Um, and then those, and page views, by what I mean by that is when the, somebody clicks on the widget and the widget rolls up on the screen, mm -hmm. that counts as a page view, both for our partner site and mm -hmm. for us. Um, and then in a typical widget, there's about nine links. So, you mm -hmm. know, you're talking about a quarter of a billion um, links out uh, to blogs and mainstream media articles. And you make money uh, by advertising on those page views, correct? We make, absolutely. We make money through advertising. advertising. We also make money um, with certain partners in subscription uh, type deals to run the service. Okay. So, so they don't pay you for how many clicks uh, or how many page views, but they just pay you some sort of fee? In an advertising fee? model, they pay us on performance. Um, in the subscription model, what they're betting on, I believe, is that we're going to create recirculation around their content. And then on their content pages, they have advertising. They have their own RPM. Um, and that means they're going to make a lot more money okay. you know, by driving more page views. So from a practical standpoint, Vader TV is a publisher of content, and uh -huh. we would also certainly welcome content from around the web. So why would Vader TV use Sphere? Yeah, in fact, we have a lot of um, micro-publisher uh, partners, uh, mm -hmm. some of the uh, true kind of A-list players out there, GigaOM, um, Real Clear Politics, All Things D, 
TechCrunch, um, Cool Hunting, just a bunch of great sites. And I think what they're doing it for is they believe that it adds to the user experience. I think mm -hmm. the bloggers are very progressive in their thinking. Mm -hmm. They're also very progressive about um, their understanding of the values of linking out mm -hmm. and having people link back. Um, and so, you know, I think first and foremost, you do it for the user experience. Secondly, you know, we can make a few nickels together too. How many page views, additional page views, do you think you drive? No, it depends. I mean, take whatever your page views are and look at somewhere between a third of a point and a full percentage point. But you don't sell the views. advertising, correct? We do. We do. Oh, do. Um, okay. We actually, right now, we do it through a partnership with FM Pub. Okay. Um, and in some cases, our partners will sell it. And then in some cases, we have people coming to us directly and okay. we have the flexibility to sell it in any way we want. Now, for someone who publishes content, such as Vader TV, can you also be a publisher or syndicate the content? through your network? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and in effect, when somebody is a Sphere partner, we make sure that they receive prioritization in our mm -hmm. results set. So, mm -hmm. um, and what that means is a little tricky to kind of explain. So, if there's a hundred matches um, and uh, three of those people happen to be our partners, we're going to surface their matches first. If there's a hundred matches and none of them are our partners, then it's just meritocracy and the first one comes up. And what's the revenue split there? Um, with our publisher partners? Yeah. It depends. It's all over the board. It's all over the board. Yeah. So tell us about Sphere's um, economics. You um, started in 2005. Are uh -huh. you? How much money did you raise? Are you looking for We raised $4 million dollars, um, okay. uh, through a group of fairly well-known angels and also some great uh, institutional investors and uh, we're not looking for money. You're doing just fine? We're doing great. Cash flow positive? <laughs> not cash flow positive yet, but uh, we're, we, burn, we burn very little money. Okay. We burn nothing. Okay, well, thank